Joel Rosenberg has done it again. His newest political thriller, The Kremlin Conspiracy, feels ripped from tomorrow's headlines. With an American president distracted by North Korea and Iran, a czar is rising in Russia with a brazen plan that threatens NATO and could draw the U.S. into nuclear war. The Kremlin Conspiracy, from New York Times bestselling author Joel C. Rosenberg. With us now, and I tell you, your, your timing is uncanny. Uh, how, did, how did you come up with the concept, uh, and, and how did you meet this headline? Right. Well, look, as you know, Gordon, I've been writing about the threat of radical Islam, and I've been doing it through novels to try to drive that into the mm -hmm. popular culture, the understanding. I've been doing that for almost 17 years, and I just needed a professional, you know, reshuffling of the deck, you know. Radical Islam is evil, but it's not the only evil in the world, as we see in North Korea and elsewhere. So I, I was looking for a new threat to write about, uh, a worst-case scenario, and, I, and my eye kept being drawn back to Vladimir Putin. Uh, now, as you know, I, I'm Jewish on my father's side, and my father's family were Orthodox Jews that escaped out of Russia mm -hmm. in the early years of the 1900s when Tsar Nicholas II was in power. Yeah, the pogrom. Yeah, 60,000 yeah. Jewish people murdered, uh, many raped, beaten, tortured. It was horrible. We got out by God's grace. But ever since part of our heritage, part of our DNA, I would say, is to keep an eye on the evil of the Tsars in, 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 uh, in the Kremlin. And I, and I so, I see in Putin someone who, though he was born and raised in the Soviet era, the communist era, while he was an operative in the KGB and eventually rose to the head of the modern KGB known as the FSB, he's not a communist at heart. He is, I, I, think, I think he sees himself as a czar, someone trying to rebuild and expand the imperialist power of Russia. He feels humiliated by the collapse of the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. He says it's the worst geopolitical catastrophe of the 20th century. Now, you and I wow. could pick a few others, like the Holocaust, <laughs> World War II itself, Cambodia, Rwanda. Uh, that I someone thinks the collapse the greatest, of the Indian Empire is- It is liberation of the absolutely century. Absolutely, it was, but the- Where you, you have a system that's failed and it needed to collapse well, and their you, freedom needed to come. It's a window into his soul. That he thinks that, that this is a disaster and that he needs to re, uh, rebuild the glory of Mother Russia. So uh -huh. with that premise, I began to ask myself, all right, what's, let's imagine a worst case scenario for Putin. Now, I'm not going to call him Putin in the book. I, I want to take liberties. I'm going to make it a fictional character. He's not Putin, but Gordon, he's, he's Putin-esque, right? There, there are elements of him that are consistent, but this allows me to, to create somebody and, uh, and try to imagine where might they go next? Well, it's interesting you, you point out czar because the root of that, like Kaiser, is Caesar. Yes. And it, that is the, the root from, from sure. which it's all springing. Uh, and in the Christian persecution of the first, second, and third century, uh, Caesar had to be worshiped as God. And that was the test. Uh, if, you, if you refused to worship Caesar as a god, you would be put to death, and the Christians couldn't do it. They would say, yeah. there's only one Lord, exactly. and his and, name and, is Jesus. And this is what concerns me about Putin. It's not just that he's a threat to the NATO alliance in Europe. It's not just that he's a threat to Israel and others as he moves into Syria, working with Assad and the Iranians to slaughter hundreds of thousands of people and create a new Russian foothold in the Middle East. He's not just a threat to the United States with that terrible, most aggressive speech last week that he's given in 17 years. It just happens to be on the eve of my novel. I, I talk about collusion. I should be colluding. I mean, he's, he's, set, up, he's <laughs> set up <laughs> he exactly what I'm trying to talk about with the Kremlin conspiracy. But there's more. Mm. 18 months ago, as you know, he outlawed the sharing of the gospel in yes. Russia. You can no longer invite someone even to your home and, and share the gospel. It, he did it with the support, oddly, of the Orthodox Church. That's right. That's right. You can't invite someone to church. You can't email to someone, ask them to come. And you certainly can't have uh, big evangelistic campaigns like Billy Graham, God bless him, did when, when God opened the door to the communist yeah. world for the gospel through Billy Graham. Yeah. And so through we're, Gorbachev. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we're at a moment where Vladimir Putin is not just a threat. He is, a, he is much more dangerous than radical Islam. He has 7,000 nuclear warheads, and he's at war with the gospel. This is not a good combination. He's invaded uh, Georgia 
uh, the Republic of Georgia, and he occupies 20 percent. He invaded southern Ukraine, and he occupies and, and now owns Crimea. He invaded southern, or, or I'm sorry, eastern Ukraine, the Donbass region. He holds it still. And, of course, Syria. The question is, where is he going next? And in this novel, I imagine a, a fictional Russian leader trying to do a lightning-fast grab of uh, a one or two or three of the Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. Why? Yeah, these are NATO allies. Um, I would say U Ukraine. Well, but okay. <laughs> he, he, well, he's already done that. But the, I, I think the question is, he may try to get, grab Ukraine, but what would be the reason to go grab a NATO country? The, the reason would be the gamble, the gamble that in the end, the United States and, and, and NATO would not use Response, military force. Right. And suddenly, if we did not, that's the end of NATO. And now the, the, the tyrant in Moscow suddenly is the most powerful man in the world. No one's standing up to him. He has nuclear weapons. He has ballistic missiles. And he, is, he, he would be sitting on top of all the power in the world. Do That's the theory of the worst case scenario in the Kremlin conspiracy. Do you see this rising not just in Russia, but are you concerned at all about what's recently happened with China? where they've gotten rid of term limits yes. for the leader. Right. Uh, I thought what in the last century was called the cult of personality had been completely debunked. And they were going to election processes and let's have a regular changeover in leadership so we don't get into that. Right. But now the world seems to be completely turning the other way. Right. Um, are, are we getting set up for... Uh, dictators once again? We are, and I think that's, uh, I mean, you have that in North Korea, you have it in China, uh, you have it in Russia. Uh, look, China and North Korea are serious threats. Um, I think China is a little bit longer term threat. What they're doing in the South China Seas is very, very dangerous. Uh, North Korea, of course, the leader is crazy, so anything could happen there. That's my next book. Uh, literally, I'm, I'm writing it now. But right now, I think that the United States is so focused on China, North Korea, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and those are serious. I feel like Washington is, and, and Brussels is, is it's, it's as though they're not really taking seriously the Putin threat. And in fact, Putin's speech that was so aggressive last week, that's what he says. He, said, you are, he says, the world is not listening to me. And he says, you listen to me now, I am not bluffing. I feel like that for all his bravado, for all of his invasions of other countries, his knocking off uh, opponents, or at least they just disappear, for all that he's done. Assassination. Yeah, exactly. It's just this morning, it seems to be, or yesterday. For all that, he feels like he's still not getting people's attention, and he seems to want it. And that is a dangerous place to well, be. Well, Christian, what, what should we do? In the book, you, you have your hero have a moral dilemma. Uh, you're facing genocide. Right and you have an opportunity to take out uh, the right. dictator. I say Marcus Riker is a former Marine yeah. in the book. He's a former U.S. Secret Service agent. Everything he learned to protect our president will he now use to take out theirs. Sort of the Bonhoeffer question. It, it, it's a Bonhoeffer question. Is If you could take out Hitler, is that the right thing to do? We're not there yet. We, two things. First, we need to be praying for the people of Russia. Uh, for the church in Russia, we need to not forget that war is not our first option. What we want and is, is prayer, that God can change things. We need to pray for Putin. God says to pray for our enemies and for those who persecute us. So that would be him. God could change him or he could remove him. I, pr I, I pray both. Lord, save him and remove him. Um, but we also need to be praying for our leaders in Washington, particularly President Trump, who has a curious and I would say an unsettling uh, relationship, and I, I don't mean personal, but I mean policy relationship with Putin. Uh, he I, I set aside the issues of whether there's corruption or criminality. I, I, I hope not. I, 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 pro I think probably not, but that'll be figured out later. The issue is he's definitely, dr Trump is driving NATO to spend more money on defense, good. He's spending more money on defense for the United States, that's good. He's got a great team around him, and those that weren't great, they tend to leave. That's good. But, his, but he will not say a tough word against Putin at all. He'll, he'll take shots at Rocket Man in North Korea. Uh, Jeff Sessions gets tougher language as the Attorney General 
than Vladimir Putin. Why? It, it, it's, I'm not going to jump to some conclusion that it's criminal or corrupt, but, but it's unsettling when you have a leader as dangerous as Vladimir Putin, an American president that doesn't seem to, he actually hasn't even responded to the Putin speech. I don't understand it. I'm not going to try to speculate, but yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a concern. He let the Pentagon do it. But anyway, you've raised a lot of interesting moral questions. And I think as Christians, what do we do? And we need to keep in mind if the early church could pray for the Caesars that were persecuting them, uh, how much more should we be praying? And praying for the Christians in Russia, praying for Russian leadership, Chinese leadership, uh, on our own leadership. We need wisdom now more than ever. Well, Joel's book is called The Kremlin Conspiracy. You can find it wherever books are sold. And thanks again for being with us. Great to be with you, Gordon. Right. Thank you.